Let's go up to Larry Merchant with the winner and repeat champion. Hi, Roy. Uh, congratulations. I suppose you do feel redeemed by what happened. I am redeemed. I deserve to be back pound for pound number one because I am. I ain't going to hear nothing else. I should be pound for pound the best. Some people might be fine. I thank God. I thank my dear. He gave me the opportunity to go back and come back in here with the words of right. attitude. I didn't want to have to do this, but they made it. There is a cliché called boxing royalty, and you won't find anyone more suitable for the throne than James Lights Out Tony, who reigned above multiple weight divisions in his career spanning 29 years for 92 fights. Tony is one of the boxing world's most excellent defensive fighters, an effective buzzsaw of a defense artist who would dissect his opponents in devastating fashion. But what really is a king to a god? Step up Roy Jones Jr., the most remarkable athlete in boxing lore. When 10 years never losing a single round in any of his fights, dominating the middleweight divisions. Roy Jones Jr. is one of the greatest athletes in sporting history. 5 feet 11 inches and 180 pounds, Captain Hook tore through opponents using strength, explosiveness, power, speed, and technical precision, coupled with the sport's most exciting style in recent history. Listening live, as they join us now from opposite ends of the country, Roy Jones Jr. in New York City, James Tony, the champion who is in Los Angeles. Roy, what about the subject of weight for you? You're moving up from 160 to fight James at 100 pounds, where he has been living for the past year, year and a half, and a lot of people think that What about the extra eight pounds? Uh, that lets you know that I evidently think that I'm a bad man. You can go to somebody's weight to where they've been living all this time and still know that you can take over. You know that you have a lot of confidence in yourself. Well, like I said, he's coming for, he, he stepping up to challenge me. Anybody challenge me, got to get dogged out. That's my job. No. I'm not going to say, if somebody challenges me, you're going to say, oh, he's a nice guy and all that. I'm not going to do that. A Any, man challenges me, he's going to get dogged out. What about you, Roy? Anybody who come into the ring against you got to get dogged out? Nah. You don't got to get dogged out, you just got to get taught a lesson. How are you going to teach him a lesson? Tell us what's going to happen that's, in the that's fight. That's all I can do. I got to go out there he and what I got to do to teach that lesson. He can't. Can nobody teach me a lesson? I'm the teacher, baby. I'm the <laughs> we'll teacher. See. We'll come see on come to 18. 18. I'm breaking you we'll up. We'll see come to 18. I'm breaking you up. We'll see come to 18. We'll see come to 18. Fight. I'm your hustler. That's just what I'm looking for. He's a track shoes on. That's my game. That's just, just my game. That's just my game. I'm knocking your punk ass up. All right, gentlemen. I'm your huckleberry. We understand. Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. We hear you. Thanks very much, Roy Jr. and James Tony. We appreciate your time, and we'll look forward to the hostilities, and they will, trust me, genuine hostilities on the night of November 18 pay-per-view from here at the MGM Grants. The two champion fighters met in 1994 in a super middleweight bout titled Uncivil War. Having defeated Iran Barkley for the championship on February 13, 1993, and having successfully defended it three times since, Tony entered the bout as the IBF Super Middleweight Champion. Tony was one of the world's most skilled defensive fighters in history, a doctor in the sweet science of the sport, a KO artist coupled with the patience and skill to obliterate high-level opponents. Tony would go on to annihilate Iran Barkley in a bout that has been seriously considered the closest thing to perfection in a boxing fight ever. for this fight. He's coming right up the middle and James Tony is giving better than he's getting. Norm your legs. Tony's Tony was a surgeon against Barkley with a toolbox of boxing skills that opened up a pummeled Barkley over a gritty nine rounds of action. Tony's shots were always successful. Tony employed every one of his classic maneuvers while fighting both inside and outside.
during the later rounds, it was difficult to see the 32-year-old Barkley get destroyed so easily. Tony would land a phenomenal 65% of all his punches thrown. After the ninth round, Barkley's trainer Eddie Mustafa Mohammed did everything he could to stop the carnage in a fighting career that would come down to being known for being loaded with them. Tony had produced his masterpiece against Duran Barkley. On the other side of the boxing world, Roy Jones Jr. had been making his own dominant and rapid rise amongst boxing's best. 26 fights, 26 wins, 23 knockouts, firmly placing him amidst the world pound for pound rankings and one of the world's most dominant and skilled boxers in every history book written. Jones carried a ruthless combination of size, unparalleled athleticism, speed, and knockout power. He was the biggest mismatch in the sport and the most unstoppable force since Iron Mike Tyson. In his duel with Bernard the Executioner Hopkins, Jones was the sharper of the two from the start of the fight because his jab was able to hold Hopkins at bay. with a right hand over the touches before they land the position and you draw there's a good right hand Hopkins struggled through the fight because he couldn't develop his jab which prevented him from landing many successful blows so well, but you notice uh, Jones is starting to breathe a little heavily Jim starting to show signs of where Roy Jones would provide far too quick and explosive for the technician Hopkins, taking Hopkins apart over 12 rounds of boxing action. Roy Jones Jr. Enter James Lights Out Tony, one of the hottest fighters of the 90s, Jones' next opponent. They were regarded as two of the best fighters in the world and the pound for pound rankings Tony came into number two and Jones at number three. Tony with a monstrous 44 win two draw career record, Roy Jones 26 and 0. Welcome to the MGM Grand Hotel, the biggest Top hotel boxing in the world. Presents world championship boxing. Just 25 pieces. Tony, you got an opinion one way or the other? Well, it's really hard to sit. These fighters had a big stare down. I love Roy Jones' uh, composure. He just walks around and he's, he's wishing to Tony loves fight. that. He thrives off of the opposition. No. Tony going 23 by knockout victory tonight. He steps up from the middleweight divisions where he, he has scored scored 29 KOs and has two draws. And while compiling that record, he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. Dominating by a unanimous decision, Jones controlled the majority of the fight. The third round of boxing would provide the boxing world with one of the greatest and most iconic knockdowns the sport has ever seen. He has to do it, that's to put the pressure on. But Roy Jones came off the rope. So he got the shots back at Tony. Oh! Big left hook! And down goes Tony! Jones baited Tony into falling for one of his unique offensive assaults with a lightning left hook knocking Tony onto the ropes. Jumping left hook. He got suckered into it. I don't think he's as hurt as the people might think he is here because he was I have to figure you're probably surprised at the power of Jones as well. I'm not surprised at the power of Jones at all, but... Uh... Following the knockdown, Jones continued to control the action, continually employing the speed to score combinations and evade Tony's attacks and traps. Look at that. I mean, that's just an athlete, pure and simple, and Tony's having a hard time dealing with it, even though he's... Tony was completely outmatched against the larger, faster, more explosive weapon in Jones. Struggling to keep up with Roy Jones' wide-ranging offensive tactics and speed. Jones went on to coast against Tony, employing multiple combinations that broke open Tony's Philly shell defense. 
the rest of the fight stories. One thing it does for Tony, though, it gives him a chance to move in because there's no punches coming in. Yeah. Into a turnbuckle. Well, Jones landed two rights. Uh, and then I don't know. Like trying to do a, a, a beautiful left hook by Roy Jones. Right, in, right down Main Street from Tony, and he can turn the tide. When the match came to a conclusion and the judges' scores were recorded, Jones had won across all three. And, and Jerry Roth has it, 118 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. prevailed by unanimous decision, displaying what happens when a king meets a god in the boxing ring. Well, first of all, I take the time out to thank God for giving me the opportunity to keep my head together until I do that. Thank everybody. And plus the coach, no! Roy Jones still number one and gonna be that way, baby. Oh, he's doubtful. Him and all the rest of that, that Roy Jones is a fluke. Now they know. 